What a beautiful but frigid morning to finally begin winter layup at Bay Ship. And I'm excited that it's going to be a sunrise entry, lakeside of my old favorite, the Joseph Block. I can picture her now emerging through the sea smoke into the Sturgeon Bay Ship Canal. Leaving nothing to chance, I've had my gear primed and packed and staged by the back door since 4 o'clock this morning. I feel especially confident that this year I have not forgotten or overlooked a single detail and I can't wait to get on the road. Well, I guess there was one detail I overlooked. I have never had such a bad case of equipment failure as I did on this day. Tell you what, it's always something. This car, I just had it in for service and it was acting kind of peculiar. So, uh, Randy Saws up at Saws Auto uh, did a diagnostic check on it. I've been having really screwy things happening with the electronics on this car. And so, he found out that there is a defective data communication module or computer device. And so they can't fix it. It has to be fixed by Subaru. The nearest Subaru dealer is 60 miles away in Green Bay. So I called there and they don't have the part in stock. And so I'm waiting for them to get the part in stock and take it in and it'll be about a $700 repair. So as you can see, I keep a DeWalt emergency battery charger, tire filler, alternator checker thing in the car. That's really for a colony. And uh, yeah, came in handy today. But here we are, on our way to the Sturgeon Bay Ship Canal Land Trust. So, my batteries are dying almost as fast as I put them in, including this microphone battery I had to uh, on my DJI wireless. The uh, receiver went out. So, she's taking her time lining up, coming in. And uh, look at this, all of this ice choking the canal entrance here. I have never seen a boat come in the canal with this much ice without the tugs coming out to break it up and the tugs have not come out to break it up so this is going to be interesting and uh, very loud <laughs> when this ice starts cracking start breaking. All right, I'm gonna reserve some battery here because we still have to go into town. Well, I'm having all kinds of issues with batteries today. First it was the car, then it was the drone because it's so cold out. Even though I try to keep the batteries warm in my inner pocket on my inside coat, they were fully charged when I left this morning. 51% battery. So I didn't want a chance being up too long or going out too soon. So I waited to the last minute to get the drone ready. I went to put the drone up and the batteries went out on the controller. And then my phone 
because it was so cold, it shuts off automatically. That I use on my controller. I had to change the batteries in the vlogging camera, Canon M50, and I had to change the batteries in my little Osmo Action camera twice. So I have my microphones also went out, so I'm charging those now. Hopefully I'll have a little bit of something by the time I get into town. But it has been a bad battery day, that's for sure. I don't know about the footage that I got or even the photos that I got. It was uh, very dark and overcast, as you can see now. Brilliant sunshine. As soon as the block entered the canal, the sun came up. So, uh... This is the raw file of the only halfway decent shot I took out on the canal entrance. I was surprised to see how soft and desaturated the overall image was, resulting from the evaporating water in the atmosphere between me and the Joe Block. And that actually became a problem during editing. I posted this final image on social media and received many positive comments for which I truly appreciate, but I have to tell you, I am so disappointed in myself with these results. And let me explain what bothers me so much about this image and why. First of all, there is no balance in the overall scene. And while I was focused on capturing the sense of cold and the resoluteness of the mighty Joe Block, it's as if I totally ignored even the basics of capturing a quality image and a good composition. The front of my lens, to start off, was covered with water spots and dirt because I failed to take a cloth to the front element before I took any of the shots that day. Not an insurmountable problem and an easy fix with a spot removal tool in Photoshop, but it's the way the subject is framed that I just can't get past. There should be more space out in front of the vessel than there is behind it. This may seem subtle, but it's important. It relates to the viewer that the boat is moving forward by naturally drawing the eye from right to left, an area of crowded space to an area of open space, across the image, not out of the image. Cropping the image can help correct this by eliminating the dead space on the right and expanding the open space in front of the bow. But unfortunately, I was at the edge of the frame. In other words, out of position. Had I turned my camera a few degrees to my left, it would have improved this image greatly. And then I broke one of the cardinal rules of composition. Never overlap secondary elements in the photograph with the main subject. While the breakwater in the foreground was intended to serve as a leading line into the image and up to the Joe Block, it's off-center, way off-center. And I waited a few seconds too long and was standing too far to the right. And glaringly, the end of the pier overlaps with the bow of the boat. This should never happen. There should be a space between them to add a sense of depth. And finally, boat images, I have found, seem to work best at a 16 by 9 crop. It helps to accentuate their length on the landscape. Here there's a considerable amount of boring along the top of the scene and out of focus distraction along the bottom. So this was my final edit. Still, I'm not happy with it. It seems very crowded to me. That sense of space and volume is missing. Then I gave some thought to making a black and white version of the image with a tighter crop. Hmm, interesting, I guess. Gives it a different feel, certainly. You can put lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig. So, uh, yeah. Hopefully I'll be able to get something in town. Gotta get there before the bridges go up. Onward. I'm not gonna have any drone footage. So I don't have to be in a place where I can launch the drone. I think what I'm going to do is park at uh, Stone Harbor Resort, walk up onto the steel bridge, and 
take a shot from where the block is coming through the Oregon Maple Street Bridge because she's got such great ice on her hull. It'll make a, a really nice photo, uh, even though I'll be kind of shooting into the sun. Uh, maybe I'll stay on this side of the bridge. Yeah, catch the sunlight off her hull if I stay on the west side. <coughs> Excuse me. Which actually, of course, is the south side. If I go on to the east side, the north side of the bridges, I'll be shooting into the sun and the starboard side. <coughs> oh, the starboard side of the block is going to be in shade so it's always better when the sunlight is shining on the whole so I think we'll stay to this side of the bridge so we're standing on the west side of the bridge this is a, a good angle I think because we're going to get the sunlight I'm trying to record sound we got a guy that pickup truck here, big snow blower on a trailer. He's got the snow blower running. Hoping to get the uh, a salute. Going handheld. I'll be able to move around a little bit. I'm a little nervous about leaning over the edge though. This polarizing filter on. I like that it's so deep on this particular filter. But, uh, it's just gonna fall off. You bang it just a little bit. Okay. I was hoping to get out here before the bridges went up. It would be way too early. Probably for the tugs to get through. And, uh, now we just wait. This is the second image I took. Again, I should have allowed for more space out front. But I think why I didn't provide that was to avoid visual distractions along the shore. Again, I was hand-holding the camera and kind of shooting on the fly, so I'm not really sure. But I know that there's a giant blue center point marina building just off to the left. And although there is a nice diffused light on her hull, I should have taken the shot just a few seconds sooner as she came through the bridge, so I could hide the bridge tender station behind the lip of the bow. Guess I wasn't paying close enough attention. Even though the day was rife with failure in both equipment and my execution, my time wasn't wasted. There are few things in life that bring me more joy than welcoming these freighters in for winter layup my photographs, videos, and drone footage, and then sharing them with you. It has led to wonderful friendships. It's connected me to people from all around the world who are as fascinated by our peninsula's culture, people, and maritime tradition as I am. So I'll go home, lick my wounds, shake off my frustrations from today, and be more prepared tomorrow as we await the arrival of the thousand-foot Stuart Court her first visit to Sturgeon Bay in seven years. That's next time on Behind the Door. Until then, take care of yourselves. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you down the road. Mm -hmm.